What's up everyone? My name is Melissa McCack and this is Teach the Teach, where I teach you how to teach a board game. And in this video, I'll be covering Legendary, a Marvel deck building game. Now, this is not a how to play video. This is a how to teach video where I'll be teaching you how to teach this game. So if you have any difficulties teaching games, these are some ways that have worked for me and maybe they could help you out. The first thing I do is I make sure if people don't know what a deck building game is, I start off by letting them know what makes a deck building game a deck building game. I might say something along the lines of as the game progresses, you are purchasing cards to place into your deck and then on your turn you're placing you're playing pretty much your whole hand and when you play them, all the special abilities will go off and they'll go into your discard pile. And whenever you buy a new card, they're gonna go directly into your discard pile, at least for this game. And eventually they'll get shuffled into the deck. So that's how the building of the deck works. Then I go into pretty much the story of this game. It doesn't really need much of a story because you know, you're playing Marvel characters, you're taking certain heroes, and I like to think of it as though you're building a team of heroes because you're not actually playing a specific hero like Spider-Man or anything like that. You're building up your team of heroes and you're going up against the villain and their scheme. So I let them know, you know, welcome to the Marvel Universe, pretty much. And then I let them know about the objective, about the scheme. So whichever scheme you're playing, I randomly have out here the secret invasion of the scroll shapeshifters. I find this one to be super difficult, but either way. Uh, so I let them know that the objective is this scheme. We don't want the villain, and in this case, I randomly chose out Magneto to complete his scheme. And then letting them know how the game ends, which is pretty much either we win or the villain wins, right? And then just letting them know the different ways of losing this game and how ultimately we win the game. So for example, for this one with the shapeshifters, I would let them know that we will lose if certain amount of heroes become scrolls or actually they escape and letting them know that, okay, in order to win the game, we have to beat Magneto, but we have to beat him four times, right? So now you're ready to take your first turn at this point where I would usually go first. That way everybody else kind of gets to see how the flow works and how it all actually uh, makes sense, right? So I would just go right into the villain phase where you flip over your villain and you start putting them uh, into the city, right? So I would start off by placing it into the sewer. And if I pick up a random card here, I got the uh, super scroll villain scrolls okay uh so it's the super scroll right so he comes out and he goes into the sewer and now specifically for this dude uh he's got a fight ability so each player ko's one of their heroes and that's pretty much what i would do each time a villain comes out i would say uh what the new ability is because some of them have like an escape ability so when an escape ability comes out i say okay so when this villain escapes because you're letting them know that eventually this villain here from the sewer they're gonna keep getting bumped over as each villain comes out. So eventually they're gonna escape the city. So some abilities have the escape ability. So when that particular villain comes out, you can read out the escape ability, letting them know, all right, when that villain escapes, that ability is gonna go off. When this villain, whenever you fight it, this ability is gonna go off. So that should make sense to them. And then letting them know, you're gonna notice uh, the life points here. So in the uh, bottom right hand corner, that's how much power you need in order to KO this villain. Cool, easy enough. So now you go into your actual uh, buying phase, right? So you play out your entire hand of cards. So maybe uh, you shuffled up your starting deck and you might have something that looks like this, right? So everybody should have already drawn up to six cards, right? And you play out your whole hand and you might have something that looks like this and I just got a whole bunch of buying power here, but a bunch of shield agents. So I let them know, okay, I've played out my hand and anything with this star here says that's how much buying power I have. So if I've played six of these out, I have six buying power, which is pretty cool. But maybe you also pulled out some of these, right? The shield troopers. Anything with this mark here at the bottom left-hand corner says that's how much uh, attacking power I have for the round where I can use that to kill off the villains from the city. And letting them know, all right, so now with my buying power, what can I do with that? 
you're, you should have all of your heroes set out on the HQ down at the bottom. So there should be, I think, five of them. So you might have something that looks kind of like this, right? Where you might have, you know, some Black Widows and uh, Spider-Man, maybe Thor in the mix here. And letting them know, all right, when you want to buy one of these heroes, their cost is here in the bottom uh, right-hand corner. And letting them know they most likely will have some sort of special ability, but over here they might have an attack power or something like, uh, where is it? Yeah, here we go, Spider-Man, where he has buying power. So you're going to place that into your deck and reminding them whenever you buy something, it's going to go into your discard pile. Eventually it'll get shuffled back into your deck. Some of these cards, they'll notice, have a certain ability that requires you to have already played a certain faction card. And you could explain that off the bat right there, letting them know that ability only goes off when you've already played another card of that faction. If you haven't played it, then you could still play the card, that's fine, but you won't get the special ability. You'll just get, like for him, he gets two buying power then, and no other bonus. That, so that should make sense to them. So you could start buying your cards, you might be able to attack a villain if you can, also letting them know that nothing carries over into the next round. So you play all of your cards, if you have any leftover buying power or leftover attack power, then that's it. You, you, it's gone, it's spent. You also want to let them know that if you want to attack the villain, you have to have the full amount. So if you have the four damage, that means you need to have already been able to play in one turn four damage in order, at least four damage in order to kill this guy. Also letting them know you have a choice though. You could kill this dude or you could kill Magneto. And so when you've explained the objective to them of this game, they should have known that you have to kill Magneto four times, right? And when you've, killed, when you've KO'd him once, you're gonna flip over one of these cards and it's gonna have some sort of fight ability. I wouldn't actually turn it over, you, you don't wanna sh show them that. But you have to kill, KO him four times, some sort of ability So then that's will pretty much off. the end of your turn and it could, it could go to the next player where they just play all their cards. Awesome. A couple of things as the game goes on. You might come across a Master Strike card. These are things that I would explain as the game goes on, right? So I wouldn't explain that, oh, by the way, a Master Strike card might come out and then like a Scheme Twist might come out. Don't explain all these things, right? It could be an information overload and they don't really need to know about it just yet. So right when like the Master Strike comes out, then that's when I'd say what happens based off of Magneto's little Master Strike ability. Then whenever a Scheme Twist comes out, again, letting them know what happens when the Scheme Twist card comes out. Some cards might have them get wounded, right? And then that's again when you could explain the wounded card and just letting them know that this card kind of populates their deck and it takes up space pretty much and they could read it on their own how to heal their wounds because I know that there's been a couple of times where I've explained how to heal wounds and then people are like, Wait, how do you heal the wound? It's like, okay, it's just written on the card. Whenever you pick it up, you'll know how to heal the wound. You can just let them know that you will be able to heal the wound and it tells you how to do that right on the card. Done. Letting them know about bystanders. I don't know exactly how you play the game. I don't play the game where it's semi-cooperative. I play it where it's completely cooperative. But if you play it where it is semi-cooperative, you can let them know that bystanders will be worth points at the end of the game. If you play completely cooperatively, I just usually let them know that sometimes some cards will allow you to gain some sort of special abilities and whatnot. I think uh, Black Widow has a card in here specifically uh, where she gets some sort of power boost with these. But yeah, I just let them know some cards let you gain some sort of cool stuff when you have bystanders. Um, but other than that, that's it, right? I don't even, usually when I explain this game, I don't even let them know that there's a semi-cooperative version because I don't know, I just want to play it cooperatively and that's what people got to do. <laughs> um, okay, and by then they should know pretty much how to play Marvel Legendary, especially if you've already told them how the game ends uh, in terms of pretty much if the mastermind reaches their scheme twist or if certain decks run out um, or if you've actually beaten Magneto four times and then that's the end of the game. It's pretty simple. It's a really great gateway game, I think, or even just a game to play with veteran players. I've played with gamers 
plenty of times this anyway game. thank you so much for watching this has been another teach the teach let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments also let me know how you teach this game it'd be cool to have a little discussion of how everybody teaches this game down below in the comments if you'd like you can follow me on social media i'll see you all next time